In this video I'm going to show you how to piece and put together the striped block or strip block and the items that you're going to need is you're going to need your, your embroidery thread and a matching bobbin. You're going to need an embroidery bobbin thread and water soluble, vanish light water soluble thread. You'll need a small piece of your lighter color fabric. You're going to need three strips of your three different fabrics, fabric one, two, and three. You need your backing fabric and your optional wool. And of course I already have my battleizer in the hoop, so let's go to the machine and stitch this out. Okay, I'm all step, set up for the first step, which is water soluble thread in the needle, embroidery bobbin thread in the bobbin, and we're gonna sew a placement stitch so that we know where to put the wool batting. Step two, I'm going to continue with the water soluble thread in the needle and I have my wool that I prepared and cut the correct size and pressed along the edges. So we're just going to put that right inside of that placement stitch and the machine will sew a zigzag stitch to tack that to the battleizer. Step three, we're going to sew the pattern onto the block so we know where to place our fabric. And since I have the wool in there, I have my presser foot raised to its highest position. And it wouldn't hurt to also, as the foot is moving, to just push the wool down ahead of it. And now I'm going to continue with the water soluble thread. We're going to tack down our very first piece of fabric. And we're going to use a small rectangle as the first fabric that we're going to use. It's going to be placed here. And another identical fabric, same size, will be placed up here. But that's later on in a few more steps. So for this step, we're just going to take our fabric. We're going to lay it right side up. We're going to lay it a quarter of an inch over both of the, the lines for the pattern because we do need to have that in the seam allowance. So we're just going to lay that on there and still with the water soluble thread we're going to sew a tack down stitch. Now that I have that tacked down, I can trim what's here at the bottom, trim it about a half an inch away from the edge of the block. And now from here on out, all the different sections where the stripes are going to be, you can pretty much pick and choose where you want any one of your three fabrics. The only exception would be this is going to be that small rectangle and also up here. So I can either choose my tan colored floral or my pink. So I think I'm going to try do the tan. And we'll do that first. And the only thing I haven't done is I have not changed my thread to a regular thread because this is a seam. So water soluble thread is great for the outside edges. But bear with me while I get threaded up. Okay, so 
So I have my strip of fabric right side down with the raw edges even right here and it's gonna stitch a seam with the regular thread. And step six is a tack down stitch. So I'm going to flip my fabric and I'm going to finger press it and smooth it out and it's going to sew a tack down stitch using the regular thread. And from here I can trim a quarter of an inch from there and also on this side I'm going to clip that thread and I'll get it cleaned up for the next step. And the next step is a seam, so I have my pink floral and I'm going to lay it right side down, raw edges even, and sew the seam. Then I'm going to flip my fabric right side up, finger press. Smooth it out and sew a tack down, still using the regular thread. So step nine is another seam, and it's that section that needs a little bit wider piece of fabric. So here's my little rectangle. I'm going to place it right side down, make sure the raw edges are even, and I'm going to sew the seam using the regular thread. going to flip my fabric right side up, finger press and smooth out, and the machine will sew a tack down stitch. Isn't that pretty? And the next step is the seam, and again I can choose any fabric I want to. Hmm, how about that tan color? And I'm going to lay it right side down, raw edges even, and the machine will stitch a seam. And then I will flip the fabric right side up and finger press. And we will sew a tack down using the regular thread. So now I'll trim this block a quarter of an inch from all that all those tack down stitches, and then we, we will continue. And step 13 is another seam, so I have my white floral, and I'll lay it right side down, raw edges even, and stitch the seam. Alright, now I'm going to flip this fabric right side up, and I'm going to finger press and we'll sew some tack down stitches, still using the regular thread. The tack down stitches will only be stitched here and at this side of the, the strip. We don't stitch it on the outside block because we're using regular thread. That way we don't have to do a thread change. We just need to hold it in place. So, And we don't want to have that regular thread on the outside edge of the block because when you sew your blocks together, they could show on the front side. and We don't want to have to sit there stitches out. So we'll do a short tack down there and then also a short tack down on this end. Step 15 is another seam for the piece of fabric that'll go here. So I think I'll use the tan 
and right side down with the raw edges even. And every one of these strips I've made sure that there's an, an ex extra amount that goes out past beyond the lock. And there's our seam. And then we'll flip the fabric right side up and sew the tack down. Finger pressing. it out a little bit I'm going to I won't, I'm not going to trim any fabric there but I am going to trim on the outside this other outside edge and I don't want to this is the the corner of the block right there the corner on the bottom I want to make sure that I'm trimming about a half an inch beyond that so there we are and then I also want to make sure that here where I'm going to sew another seam, it looks like a pretty generous seam allowance, perhaps too generous, so I'm going to cut that using my hoop scissors to a quarter of an inch, approximately. And then the next step is also another seam, so I think I'll choose my pink fabric for that. I'm laying it right side down with the raw edges even and we sew a seam okay so here we're not going to sew the tack down for the corner that will be done at the same time the backing fabric is added but I do need to flip it and then trim it make sure you flip first and then trim otherwise you could end up since it's a, a 60 degree angle you could end up having trimmed in the wrong wrong spot so we're just going to let that stay exactly like that for now and let's see what color shall I go with I think I'll do the pink again so right side down raw edges even you guys are getting it I'm sure by now Sewing the seam. Put that front tail. So now I'm going to flip my fabric right side up and finger press. And it'll sew a tack down stitch. do a little trimming here. Leave about a half an inch on the outside of the block. I think everything okay here is okay, but right here, this is where the tack down was stitched. So I'm going to cut that to be about a quarter of an inch left in the seam. see what color do I want to go with. I think I'll use the white. And again if you want to make a plan of what colors you put in which sections and stick to the plan so all four of your blocks are the same you can do that or you can mix it up a little bit. Just try and keep them all even. There's my seam, and again, we're not doing the tack down until we get the backing fabric added. So we're just going to flip it, finger press it, and I will trim it right there. And that gives me about a half an inch overhang past the block. And it looks like I need to do a little trimming up here. And then we're going to sew a seam. So I think I'm going to go with the tan again. So right sides down, raw edges even, I'm going to sew a seam. Then we're going to flip. 
flip the fabric right side up, finger press and smooth it out, and it's gonna sew a tack down stitch. Oops, a little thread tail to trim there. And I'll have a little trimming to do here. Again, I'm gonna trim it so it's out quite a bit, at least a half an inch past where that block actually ends. And I have a somewhat generous seam allowance right here, so I'm going to trim that down to a quarter of an inch. And now I can do the seam for my final piece of fabric that goes on the front. I'm thinking pink. So right side down, raw edges even. We sew the seam. Now it's time for the backing fabric, but before that I'm going to flip this right side up and finger press the seam, and then I'm going to trim so I don't have this long piece of fabric hanging off here. I'll just trim it so it's at least a half an inch past the block. Okay, it's time to add the backing. This is the back of my hoop, so you can hopefully see the outline of our triangle. And this is my backing fabric. I've sprayed this side with um, temporary spray adhesive. And I'm just going to center that over the block. I'm going to look in all the different corners just to make sure I've sufficiently covered and have an even amount of fabric. I want to make sure we have that centered. So now I'll go ahead and put it back on the machine. I've switched to water soluble thread and we're going to sew a tack down to attach the backing to the block. Okay, so now that my hoop is flipped over, I did peek underneath, make sure you don't have any Dunlops, that's when your backing fabric Dunlops over and you stitch it on and then you have to tear it all out. So for step 24 is the backing fabric. This is water soluble thread. I'm going to make sure I have a nice finger press right here on the top piece of fabric and we're going to sew the backing fabric off and it also tacks down our corners. So before we get to the corners I'm going to want to make sure I'm finger pressed real nicely. In areas like this I want to make sure that the folds of the fabric are not in the way of the um, embroidery foot. So I have my stylus. I'm about ready to to ride over this little area right here and I'm just going to with my stylus hold this down so it doesn't get caught picked up by the presser foot. Alright, now we have our backing fabric on and everything tacked down on the front so now it's time to do the quilt. Since we're going to do the quilting, we need to match our needle thread with our bobbin thread. So I have a matching bobbin I will put in here. Bring that bobbin thread to the Bring it up. And I've already checked the back side of my hoop and my backing fabric looks good there. Can't see it in the camera at the angle we've got, but we're going to place the hoop on the machine. And at this point, any time after you've added your backing fabric, you're going to match your needle and bobbin thread. You're also going to turn off your automatic thread cutter. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm ready to go. And I'm going to do a needle down, needle up. I'm going to bring that bobbin thread to the top. And by doing so, it'll make the back look a lot neater when it does the knot on the back. So let it knot.
Okay, here is the strip block. I've taken it out of the hoop. And to trim it, we're going to trim it a half an inch from the basting stitch around the whole block on all three sides through all the layers. So I'm going to use my trimmer by George. It's a perfect size for that. And I'm going to lay that half inch mark on the basting stitch and then cut it all off. There's side one. an inch through all the layers. It's such a cute block and I love this fabric. So there is the completed strip block. I'll show you the back. There it is! Yay!